Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our faculty and graduates.
Thank you. Thank you to our fabulous bagpipers, Brian May and Christopher Rodriguez. Welcome to this beautiful building and this joyous occasion. It always makes me blubber, excuse me, um, when we come in. I am Joyce Griffin Sobel. I am the president and CEO of this fine establishment. Please be seated. We normally have some one of our alumni or graduates sing the national anthem, but we have no one who claimed such talent this year. So we're adding that to our admission criteria, that you have to be able to sing in order to come into the class. This beautiful building is the New York Academy of Medicine. Um, it's getting a little tight as we continue to produce more and more spectacular RNs. But first, I want the graduates to just look around where you are and what you have done. I bet you weren't planning on becoming an RN in the middle of the pandemic. And I can tell you that the faculty certainly didn't plan on teaching you throughout a pandemic. But yet, here we are, and you should be very proud of yourself. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty and staff, I offer congratulations to all of our graduates and their families. <laughs> Today we have two uh, classes of graduates, the uh, AAS uh, program and the GBS, our generic baccalaureate program. Uh, and so th we need to remember how many sacrifices, particularly over the last couple of years, the students and their loved ones had to make on the way to a degree. But on a day like today, we see the rewards. You have been transformed by the Helene Fold College of Nursing, and your identity is forever changed to that of a registered nurse. Now, you would not be here without the help of your family, so I would like the graduates to stand and face their families and applaud them. Never before, okay, okay. <laughs> Never before in history has nursing been more important. Who would believe, certainly not I, after 47 years in, as a nurse, that I would see people hanging out their windows at seven o'clock applauding nurses. Never did I think I would see that. So we made tremendous sacrifices during the pandemic. We proved how flexible we are. We went online overnight. And we didn't want to, but we had to. We got thrown out of the hospitals. And so we had to punt and find alternative clinical training for our students. And our simulation lab has been vital to our students getting the skills that they need in order to be able to function in a hospital. Your faculty guided you through all the clinicals, all the simulations and case studies, 
and everything else that allows you to be here today. The United States faces a deficit of 450,000 registered nurses by 2025. And nurse educators are needed to get you there, to get people to become an RN. So I would like you to stand and applaud your faculty. The faculty are right here in the front row. And I won't have you stand again, even though I could, so you don't get a blood clot or anything from sitting too long. <laughs> but let's appreciate our staff, who have done so much for you by financial aid, by student services, by arranging tutoring, and you cannot believe how much work goes into pulling off an event like this. And it's our staff who have done all of that. So they're standing all around dressed in black. So our graduates will soon be at a hospital or clinic near you. But first, there is an exam. Oh, there is an exam. So for all of you families that have financially supported your graduate, if you see them do anything but study over the next few weeks, shove them to their desk. <laughs> it is a very difficult exam, and there is no amount of preparation that's too much. So families, please encourage them. They shouldn't be working. They shouldn't be working at the A&P like I did when I was getting out of college. They shouldn't be working as an aide anywhere as little as possible until they study and pass this exam. Uh, it is vitally important, and it's the only way that they will become financially independent by, f by passing this test. Right? So let's. Uh, Let's uh, make sure that that's a big priority. The students are sick and tired of hearing me talk about it, so I'm talking to the families at this point, because <laughs> they've turned me off. I can see by their faces. <laughs> oh, here she goes again. So uh, that's good. So uh, I now would like to introduce Dr. James Fronthal, who is the chairman of our Board of Trustees. Thank you. I'm pleased to welcome you here today on behalf of the Board of Trustees. A number of my colleagues are here as well. And we're very proud of the college. It's been selected by numerous rating organizations as the best college of its type in New York State and in the United States. <laughs> Family and friends, you may have heard from the students that our academic program, that the one they just completed, was hard. That's true, and that was our intention. What nurses do is important. Lives depend on it. So excellent training is absolutely essential. Graduates, earning a degree from the Helene Fold College of Nursing is a great accomplishment. We're proud of you as you enter the community with your new academic credentials. You should go forth with the self-confidence that you've mastered a challenging program and are well prepared for the future. I've been around the college for almost 40 years, and there are a few pieces of advice I'd like to impart to you, things I've learned over that time. You should join the Alumni Association. It helps support the college and, in turn, makes your degree more valuable. Second, you should take the NCLEX exam while the things that you've learned are still fresh in your mind. Study well, but take the exam soon. And finally, if you're in our associate degree program and you're going to get a bachelor's degree, as the state of New York expects, I hope that you'll return to the Helene Fold College of Nursing. Thanks very much. Well, I 
am just so pleased and honored to introduce our keynote speaker today, Melba Wilson. I would bet one or two of you has had a meal at Melba's uh, in your lifetime. But Melba was born, bred, and buttered in Harlem, as she says. Today, she proudly represents her New York neighborhood as one of the most successful African-American women in the restaurant and catering business. Her achievements are countless, and her reputation in the food service industry is stellar. She appears regularly, and I'm sure you've seen her, on national news and talk shows, such as Live with Kelly and Ryan. I love Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Good Morning America, 60 Minutes, The View, yeah. The Today Show, <laughs> CBS uh, Mornings, um, and she's co-hosted live with Kelly and Ryan. With Ryan? Oh, yes, with Ryan. Um, she is the proud mother of a 19-year-old son. She has a cookbook published by Simon & Schuster. She was honored twice by Ebony Magazine. She's also recently been honored by the AKA Sorority, Google, Chase. She was inducted into the Crane's 2021 Hall of Fame and named one of Crane's most powerful women of 2021. She is the first female and first person of color to be elected as president of the New York City Hospital Hospitality Alliance. So welcome, Mel. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I'm from Harlem, so when I speak, you got to speak back to me. Good afternoon, everybody. There we go. There we go. What a great day today is. So when you hear the word comfort and you see me, you think of collard greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, you name it. But when I hear the word comfort, I think of nurses that hold your hand in, at the midnight hour, someone who's kind, someone who's caring, and someone who makes a way out of no way. That is what I see here today. Congratulations on your decision to join the ranks of many brave men and women on the front line of healthcare. During life, we make important decisions. Many of those decisions, we hope, will have a positive impact on the people around us. You all are on to something, because according to the latest annual Gallup reports of various professions, nurses lead the nation in ratings for honesty and ethics for the 20th consecutive year. The public recognizes nursing as the most trusted profession because of the care they take to provide the best support possible to patients, families, and each other. By the way, in this report, physicians came in second place, trailing nurses by 14 points. Yes! <laughs> You know, Dr. Samson Davis, uh, who wrote the book, The Pack, is my cousin. I couldn't wait to let him know about that. As you know, we've come through one of the most difficult times in the history of our lives, COVID. According to the CDC, in the United States to date, there are over 80 million cases reported, close to 1 million deaths, and over 10,000 current admissions. May 2020 marked the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale. Actually, yesterday was her birthday. <laughs> Considering that her bicentennial fell during a worldwide pandemic is both illuminating and iconic. Nightingale's experience as a nurse during the Crimean War in the mid-1850s led her to three insights 
that came to define her professional life. Those insights were as revolutionary as they were unpopular. She noted that medical care has the potential to do harm. Also that nurses require stringent and scientific training and medical care does not exist in a vacuum from the world around. Nightingale was uncertain of what she was about to face when she arrived at the British Military Hospital in November 1854, a year after the war had begun. This reminds me of the beginning of COVID. None of us knew for sure what we were about to deal with, and that also included the restaurant industry. During COVID, colleges, their administrators, faculty, and staff recognized that the crisis had rippling effects. We all witnessed fatigue and suffered from burnout. Schools knew that they had to keep their doors open in order to prepare students to be ready to fulfill the pipelines to assist nurses at the bedside, while the food industry also kept our doors open as we knew that open doors represented hope and a nod to keep people optimistic. Like nursing schools, the restaurant industry never stopped. But instead, just as you guys did, we pivoted using technology and resources like never seen before. Nurses turned to online learning platforms while the restaurant industry bolstered businesses like Uber and DoorDash to deliver and to meet the needs of both customers and across the country, over 300,000 food industry employees that depended on us to keep their families afloat. Not being able to answer when or how things would end, we had no clue. Florence Nightingale was horrified to learn that far more soldiers were dying of infection and poor medical care than were dying on the battlefield. With determination, she found a way to make a difference and slashed the hospital mortality rates from 33% to 2% over the course of one single year. She, just like you, never gave up. Today, we worry about people who suffer with food insecurities all around the world, and our work continues. The common denominator here is caring for people, from the bedside to our communities. Although we are different in a multitude of ways and hail from a variety of different backgrounds, some of the same threads run deep in our hearts and through our veins. Nursing school is not for the faint of heart. I tell you, I would see some blood and go running. The only blood I'm looking for is something on a chicken that I'm getting ready to fry, okay? <laughs> I give you guys a lot of credit for that. How many times were you told that to be a successful student, it takes time management, prioritizing, dedication, commitments, and a lot of studying. You see, being someone determined and with goals is about recognizing the importance of balance. And you learned that through your nursing school journey that sometimes the balance was 80-20. And in those times, you had to be okay to surrender or to push harder. The hours you spent studying, events that you missed, the days that were spread so thin because you waited until the last minute to study for that exam, <laughs> meeting hard deadlines on assignments, the time spent bargaining for the extra point, or to throw out a question, if, you, if you're a parent, your children who had to become more independent, the people that you had to leave behind because they just couldn't understand your journey. And quite frankly, you didn't have time to explain it. The people you lost, 
and may not have had the time to grieve. The tears you cried because you were just tired and tired of being tired. And ultimately, the fear of not making it here today and to the finish line. These were not signs of weakness, but opportunities to recharge, shift, pivot, and grow. You see, I know a thing or two about that word growth. As a black girl, yes, born, bred, and buttered, right here in the village of Harlem, I too have heard this all too often before. We are the little engines that could, not just because we think we can, but because of the amazing strength courage and sacrifices of our ancestors. That's right. <laughs> you know, choosing one of the most drug-ridden neighborhoods in Harlem, 114th Street, and Frederick Douglass Boulevard, yes, on purpose, like Helene Fold College of Nursing, we all made the decision to build, commit, remain, transform, provide jobs and opportunities, and to invest in a community which has invested so much in us, Harlem. And I'm here to tell you, there is no place like Harlem in the world. People are inspired by resilience. You can over overcome the most unspeakable events if you're resilient. We've learned that these times are not impossible, but unprecedented. And as such, we rely on the strength that comes from community. So I want you to remember, lean into your bench. And that includes all of the professors, the instructors, the administration who selfishly, selflessly give in large measure their time, expertise, and patience. See, they understand paying it forward. We must stay focused on the details, recognizing the responsibilities that we have for generations to come, but most importantly, in this moment. And at this time, we must continue to be our brothers, and our sisters keepers. So at this moment, I'd like to ask all of the graduates to please stand. And I'm speaking that in existence, all of the graduates, please stand. This is my personal message to you. You are power. You are full. You are enough just the way you are. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not. You are resilient. You are the future. You are the difference. And you are here today to graduate. So I want everybody else, as I stated earlier, I am from Harlem State Standing. And as you may or may not know, we have over 400 churches in Harlem. So y'all know I had to bring a little bit of that church. I didn't say church. I did say church here with me today. So I want everybody else to stand up on your feet because they deserve a standing ovation. 
So in the words of the great Harriet Tubman, I want you to look at your neighbor and repeat after me. Neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor. Every great dream, Every great dream. Begins, with begins with a dreamer. You have within, you have within. The, strength. the strength, the patience, the passion, the passion to, reach to reach for the stars and to change the world. And change the world. It, is no it is no longer impossible. It is, it is. I'm, possible. I'm possible. From vision, From vision. to reality. Let the church say amen, and y'all can pass around the offering plate. Thank you. Congratulations, and I thank you for allowing me to be a part of such an amazing time in your lives. Thank you. Isn't that fabulous? I was fortunate enough to attend the luncheon for the Crane's 50 Most Powerful Women for uh, 2022, I think, or was it 21? Anyway, Melba was the keynote speaker there, too, and everybody in the room was as enthralled as you all were just now. Uh, so she is a, uh, she is just like the Statue of Liberty of Harlem, I think. <laughs> She's done so much for this community. So much. So, in a moment, let me give you a feel for the rest of the program. Uh, I'm gonna call students to the stage and they're gonna pay attention to me for the first time in their education. <laughs> Right? You know that's true. <laughs> and you will come up this side of the stage when your row is called. The faculty will all be here, and you will choose what faculty you would like to pin you. They will pin you with a ribbon over your head, and then you'll walk over here, and I will hand you your diploma and Dr. Fraunthal will shake your hand. Go easy, don't squeeze, there's a lot of people. Um, so there'll be ample opportunities for your family to take your photos as you go across the stage. These stairs are treacherous. <laughs> they are. So, and I watched those shoes coming in the front door, <laughs> and my heart stopped beating a few times. So, but also, we are expecting Senator Chuck Schumer to come. I don't know when. You know the way politicians are. When I see his face, we will stop the proceedings, allow him to come and give his remarks, because we love Chuck Schumer. And Chuck Schumer just got the school one million dollars in funding. So when he comes in, really cheer, because do you know how many students that is going to help uh, with that money? I don't have it yet, but uh, you know. <laughs> so let's really make it a welcome. We're also expecting a state sen senator, Cordell Clear. I have no idea when she's appearing, so we just have to be flexible, right? Which is what nurses do, right? Okay, so, but first, we have two student speakers who are the valedictorians of their class. And they are gonna make some remarks. 
So the first one to favor us is Kamari Martin. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, President Griffin Sobel, faculty, honored guests, family, friends, and fellow graduates of the class of 2022. The honor of valedictorian is the ultimate achievement of a graduating student. And I accept that honor with great humility and pride. Today is the culmination of hard work and dedication and the excitement within me is insurmountable. I'm excited for what's to come and look forward to the endless possibilities in nursing. Firstly, I would like to congratulate the valedictorian of the associates program, Natalie. I don't know what you want. Congrats. Congratulations on your tremendous accomplishment. Also, I would like to congratulate every graduating student here today for their hard work and dedication as well. We can all attest to the many struggles of nursing school, but our resolve and our determination has led us to this day of celebration. Uh, to my family sitting up there. <laughs> Thank you for your constant support and unconditional love. I'm happy that I get to share this day with you and I expend a special thanks to my parents who are there. Thank you for your unwavering confidence in my abilities when I often doubted myself. Uh, I've been lucky enough to walk across a graduation stage twice as valedictorian. And I could not have done it without my parents. So thank you so much for that. Every one of us has those special people who want the best for us. And to all of you here today, thank you for everything you've done for us and all of your support. Next, I would like to recognize the faculty and staff at Helene Fold. It wasn't always a smooth ride, but you deserve some special recognition for getting us to this day. Personally, I would like to thank Dr. Moses for his commitment to being our director. There aren't enough words to describe how thankful my classmates and I are. You will always have a special place in the heart of cohort two. To my classmates, I challenge each of you to make a difference in nursing. With our graduation, we are at the genesis of our careers. Now we have the ability to affect positive change, no matter how minimal or monumental. There's a lot wrong in this world, but we can all do something to make it a little better. Have the courage to follow your intuition and do good work. I'll leave you all with this. The flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. Thank you for listening and good luck to everyone.
Wonderful remarks. Thank you. And our AAS valedictorian is Natalie Plains. President Griffin Sobel, faculty, honored guests, family, friends, and fellow graduates. It is with great honor that I stand here before you, and I am humbled by this opportunity. Thank you to Helene Fold College of Nursing and the administrators for providing us with the tools and facilities needed for an excellent nursing education. Dr. Blanco, not sure where she is, and Dr. Moses. And Dr. Moses, thank you for always being beacons of light and helping us through the many challenges we face. We appreciate you. Thank you to the faculty who worked countless hours to evolve and teach in times of global uncertainties. Many of you made a huge difference in our journeys. At times, you calmed us. At others, you checked us. But above all, you always believed in us. Without you, none of this would be possible, and we thank you. To our family and friends, thank you for your endless support, for picking up the slack when we were too busy studying, exhausted, and stressed. Many of you took on extra roles to support us, from caregivers, to financial providers, to emotional support, and beyond. We apologize for any stress you may have endured. <laughs> thank you for being understanding and sticking it out with us. It takes a team, and we love you. To my family, mommy, papi, tío Beto y Jesse, nunca se rinde. Gracias y te quiero. <laughs> to my fellow graduates, wow, we did this. As Michael Jordan once said, and I quote, if you're trying to achieve, there will be roadblocks. I've had them, everybody has had them. But obstacles, they don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it, end quote. I feel this resonates with our journey over the past 14 months. We made the choice to pursue our nursing degree at a time of a global pandemic, lockdowns, outbreaks, and constant change. <laughs> Many times, we were ducking and diving, waiting to see what was going to happen next. We encountered many roadblocks and giant walls. But throughout all the frustrations, fears, and uncertainties, one thing was certain to us all. We were going to become RNs. We came together, we persevered, and through endless grit and determination, we all found a way. I am beyond grateful for each and every one of you. All of you have endless greatness within you and can achieve anything you set your minds to. No limitations. To the squad, and you know who you are. Shine bright, and I love you. They say hard work builds character. Sam Ewig said, and I quote, hard work spotlights the character of people. Some turn up their sleeves, some turn up their noses, and some don't turn up at all, end quote. Graduating class of 2022, you all turned it up. Congratulations. That was fabulous. To introduce the meat. <laughs> To introduce the meaning of the pinning ceremony, I'd like to reintroduce Dr. Abdur Rahim Nizar Moses. Congratulations, everybody. Um, 
Kamari almost had me in tears, so I'll push through. <laughs> so uh, the nursing pen is our, the nursing um, pen actually has a history dating back to the Maltese Cross. The tradition started at the Nightingale School of Nursing, um, where a pen was designed as a badge um, with the Maltese Cross that were given to those nurses that completed the program. The first pen in the United States was actually given right here in um, New York City at the Bellevue um, College of Nursing to those graduates in 1880. The pen is a symbolic welcome into the profession and is given by a nurse. Thank you. I have that pin. Not from 1880, but <laughs> that kind of pin. All right, so ushers, I'm going to ask you to come down into the aisles to help with this. And so the first row of, first of all, the faculty who are pinning, would you please come up to the corner of the stage? This is such a tight stage that we are just going to wedge each other in like a jigsaw puzzle. So the faculty will stand here. The readers of the names will be at the mic right here at the foot of the stairs. So as you come, listen to me now. I told you, you have to follow directions for this one for the first time. As you come up, you're going to give your index card with your name to the reader who's standing at the foot of the stairs. And then you're going to come up the stairs, right, this side. You're going to pick the faculty that you would like to pin you. They will pin you. You will then walk across the stage to me and to Dr. Fraunthal. Okay, does everybody get that? Everybody good? Good? Wonderful. So, row one, please stand. We need ushers down here. Okay, so row one, would you, where is the reader? Okay, there you are. Okay, there you are. Row one, please go to Dr. Paul first. Congratulations, everyone. Good job. <laughs> Ken Kendria O. Fraser. Aisha Onika Obemwila. Asha Tracy Ma. Amanda J. Borton. Valentin Saunders. Tiffany Williams Opoku. Sunny <laughs> Seraph. <laughs> Sylvia Lopez Clark. 
Samantha Lynn Filusa. Emilian Tyler Chagalis. Rachel Margaret King. Maria Vikonovich. Kamari Jamar Martin. Rosie Azevedo. Samantha Omatola Imha. Jamela Da Costa. Lori Joseph. Bianca Monco. Monet. Monet. <laughs> Kimo Hestin McCoy. Brian Alexander Manta. Tamara Catherine Scipio. Anton A. Porter. Saul Maris Huertas. <laughs> Catherine C. Weeks. Katrina. Katrina. Kimberly Grandel. <laughs> Dominic Ashley Logue. Lauren Hino Hosta. Julia J. Jackson. Kenya Nicole Tigpin. Tasia Danija Jabwen. I'm going to stop the proceedings for one second to welcome our senior senator from New York, Chuck Schumer. And I now get the opportunity to thank Senator Schumer in person for the one million dollar gift that they gave to the college, which will help so many students and their families. Thank you so much, Senator Schumer. We're delighted you're able to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be here. I want to thank President Griffin Sobel and Board Chairman Frauenthal, the faculty and administrators, and all the people who work here, down to the people who keep the place clean late at night. Late at night. We together, you have made Helen Fold, Helene Fold College of Nursing one of the best nursing places to learn nursing in the country. So it's my honor to address the members of the platform, the honorary degree recipients, the friends and families, but most of all, you, the class of 2022. Congratulations. Now, I'd like to say a word to the parents. I know how you feel, parents. 
Um, not long ago, my wife and I sat where you did, and we watched our daughter Allison get her diploma. It's one of the greatest days of our lives. Now, you've been through a lot as parents. It's not easy to raise kids these days, but now you get to watch all of your blood and sweat and tears pay off as your son or daughter walks on this stage, gets a diploma, and becomes an adult before your very eyes. <laughs> parents. And one more, one more little word of thanks. As we're having a great time here together, there are young men and young women your age serving in our armed forces in dangerous places overseas, risking their lives for us. Let's have a round of applause for them as well. Hi up there. Didn't see you. <laughs> okay. Now to this great class of 2022. The challenges of the last few years, as you know, have really been unique. I'm sure you expected your time at Helene Fold to bring new experiences, but that didn't include a global pandemic. And no one performed better in the global pandemic helping New York, helping America than our nurses. So a tribute to all of you. And, and despite the difficulties of the last few years, you're here. You've earned a degree from a great institution of higher learning. You overcame immense obstacles to get here. Nothing and nobody can take it away from you. Now, we have a lot more work to do. But little by little, we're seeing signs that life is returning to normal. It took a lot of work to reach this point. And as Senate Majority Leader, as you know, I worked hard to pass the American Rescue Plan, which put money in the pockets of our families and small businesses that were hurt by this crisis. <clears throat> With your help and my leadership in the Senate, we got highly safe and effective vaccines. And now we're getting ready to embark on the next chapter in American history, which you will all help write. And one of the things I'm pushing hardest for now is to get President Biden to give forgive $50,000 in undergraduate and graduate debt, a huge burden for our students. Now, graduates, I know these are tough times, and it's an era of profound economic and social change. In the old days, when you graduated, the odds were pretty high you'd have the same job in the same field for 40 years. It's not so true anymore. Most of you will have several jobs, maybe even several different careers. And along with these economic changes, the internet has put a lot of information, so much information at our fingertips, it's sometimes hard to figure out what's important, sometimes hard to figure out, distinguish between what's true and what isn't. All too often, the loudest voices get the most attention. But the good news is this. Your generation is better equipped than any other that came before it to adapt to these changes, to overcome the obstacles they present, and seize the opportunities they afford. But right now, sitting in your seats, you may not be sure of what'll come next. With so much of the world changing so darn fast, it may feel like you're jumping into an abyss. But my advice is to you, to the class of 2022, Helene Fold, is don't fear the unknown. Embrace it, relish it, Soak up every possibility it has to offer. Cast aside your fears. My advice to the class of 2022 is simple. Go for it. Now, how do I know this? Well, I remember feeling that way when I was uh, younger. When I was seated at college graduation many years ago, like you are today, I had just learned that I'd won a scholarship to travel, to travel all around the world for a whole year, all expenses paid. For me, poor kid from Brooklyn, my father was an exterminator, never went to college. It was an opportunity of a lifetime. 
I had never been out of the country before. But at the same time, I met a girl and I fell in love. Aww. So I had, it. <laughs> I had a decision I had to make. Do I go around the world on the all expense paid scholarship for a year? Or do I stay home with the girl? What would you have done, graduates? <laughs> the class is divided. I stayed home with the girl. No, no. Don't clap yet, you romantics. The story continues. That summer, <laughs> she went on a brief vacation, and I went to the airport to meet her when she returned. As soon as I got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face that something was wrong. She dumped me by Labor Day. There I was. No scholarship, no trip around the world, no girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. You're never gonna get anywhere. Give up. Forget about it. And I did. I stayed in my house for a few months and moped around and felt bad for myself. But somehow I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and moved forward. And a few years later, I found myself seated at graduation once again, this time from law school. And like most of you, many of you, my parents were seated in the audience filled with pride. But on the way home from graduation, I broke the news to my parents that I wasn't gonna join the fancy law firm like we had planned. I told them I loved politics. That was my passion. I wanted to run for public office. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, I grew up in a working class family. They struggled to help me get through college and law school. The law, they wanted the best for me and this fancy law firm was paying $400 a week, which in those days was more money than my family had ever seen. But my heart wasn't in it. I didn't want to be pushing paper for some wealthy client I didn't know and I probably wouldn't have liked the guy if I met him. <laughs> so I wanted to go for my dream. So that fall, at the age of 23, I ran for the New York State Assembly and I had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate, there was a neighborhood activist, and then there was my mother who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. <laughs> So I get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big, thick head, as she said. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I didn't get the girl, but that November, I won the election. So, to this great class of 2022, you know my advice, take the risk. Don't let fear of failing deter you. For those, for those of us who've gotten older and look back on life, one of the most painful things are the what ifs. What if I'd only done this? What if I'd only gone there? So my advice to 2022 is simple. Go for it. You're about to cast off into the unknown. It might be scary, but you got a great education and great families that'll have you back through thick and thin. So garner up your courage, garner up your strength, put aside your doubts, take a chance. And if you do, it is my hope, it is my prayer, indeed it is my confidence that you will find true success and true joy in life. To this great class of 2022, congratulations. Good luck, Godspeed, don't forget, go for it. Thank you. You were wonderful as always. You remember Melville Wilson? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. She's a famous reporter. Oh, I'm sure. Everybody loves your greens. Oops, you better run. <laughs> so Dr. Fraunthal will help Senator Schumer down the aisle. Be careful on those steps, Senator. 
All right, so I lost track of where we are. Um, So I believe the readers need the mic, but Akil, can you make sure they understand when the readers are done that we switch the mic over to here? Just a little housekeeping. Jasmine Francis Fletcher. Suzette Forbes. Marita Ajapon. Shaasia Morrison. Rosita Stamp. Rosalia Finn. <laughs> Lana Millis Kerr. Jacqueline Medina. Carissa Amber Bauer. Jamila Carter. Joy Paget. Natalie Sabrina Plain. Shinari Joy DK. Darius Eustace Willis Sr. Yeleni M. Castro. Yeleni M. Castro. Lakia Chanel Williams. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Hunter. Tiffany Yvonne Johnson. <laughs> Kathy Pascal. <laughs> Edane Edion Wade. <laughs> Victoria Eva Chanamaka Anya. Nikita Dublin. Belinda with me, Clisidor a saint. <laughs> Annie Thomas. <laughs> Adobe Dunu. Diana Aracia Martin. Shara Ranis Thomas. Shara. 
Christina M. Eason. Brittany Nicole Daniels. Destiny Valdez. Paige Amber Backer. Derek Kelly Mordente. Tracia Tokia Stewart. Gail Natasha Nicole Johns. Karen Gray Blair. Grizel. Grizel Thomas. Junielle Roke. Susie Milagro Lopez. Alia. Alia Rachel Butler. Nizan Alder Jackson. Dominic Can. Daniel Joseph. Is the case on? Beatrice T. Pator. Yes, uh, B. Melissa Gasnaby. Hello, oh, it's you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations. Sina Cuevas. Eliana. Eliana Crawford. Oh. Samantha. Samantha Faulkner. Dorothy Kate Leahy Williams. Krista Patrick. Rivera, Catherine Mahoney. Are you counting? Jennifer Bryant, Chantal Polomik Rodas. Angela Nicole Fatry. Hi. Liber. Liber. Yeah. Daniel K. Liber. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> All right. Nicole Elizabeth Wallace. Stephen Earl Morris Jr. <laughs> Niodi Sowa. <laughs> Lindsay Andre Red. Jerisha Jaswana Johnson.
George Ofori Amanqua. Chris Serestro. Grace Rosalie James. Wait a minute. Yvette M. Cross. Doreen B. Johnson Newell. Andrea Melissa Mito. Courtney Ariel Wilson. Courtney Guides. Catherine Diana Marquis. The T is silent. Lauren Blow. Samantha Marie Falk. Natalie Gabrielle, Gabrielle Graham. Victoria Lane Tango. Dianisha Andrea Tichi. Well. Loquel Denise Hall. Erica A. Pritchard. Litara L. Wiggins. Rosemary De Jesus. Deepa K. Bergman. Jocelyn Janet Maggetti. Christine Leslie Josent. Angelica M. Soto. Jasmine Cowart. Lopa Joslyn. Imara Cynthia Holder. Sandy Rios. Kiara Jeffrey. Nicole Britt. Ronnie LaRose. Teresa Arrington Hurd. Alison Daniela Romain. Rose Jeffraud. Dornia Warren. Samantha Rodriguez Gomez. Africa McGrowder. Camille Hendricks. 
Vicky Charles. <laughs> Kelly Ann Cohen. <laughs> Megan Francis Conlin. Conklin. <laughs> Chastity Miranda. Ginny Grover. Christina Zintek. Rashida Aisha Staten. Karen M. Garcia. Dina Luisant Charles. Abiba Sise Dumbia. Melissa Pierre Lewis. Erica Bush. Tahisha Ann Martin. Carrie Ann Alicia Edwards. Gladmere Faustin. Michelle Garvis. Amanda J. Reyes Goldberg. Shakira Afia John. Donna R. Clement. Brianna Andrews. Brittany S. Thomas. Udega. Vanessa Udega. Rebecca Grace Jean. Rose Vanessa Jules. Kimberly Doreen Headley. Wait a minute. All right. Tashana Shireen Reed. Ashanti. Ashanti Bishop. Curtis B. Orar. Darnell 
Brown. Monique Williams. Wait a minute. <laughs> Crystal Green. Kayvon Deandra Adams. Kalisha Lishan Ramji. There was a lot of making out up here, that's all I can say. <laughs> but I'm so glad to see how much you love your faculty. We're gonna... We're going to uh, stop the proceedings for a few minutes because we are honored to have New York State Senator Cordell Clear here. Senator Clear was raised in Harlem, and her family has. Whoops! I lost my mic. And her family has lived there for four generations. I haven't seen her in person, and I'm surprised you're so young. <laughs> She's very young, isn't she? She's a product of the New York City public schools, and today she's best known for her fight for women's issues, disability issues, affordable housing, and quality schools. She's currently serving in her first term from District 30, which represents Central Harlem, East Harlem, West Harlem, the Upper West Side, Morningside Heights, Manhattanville, that's a lot of heights, uh, Hamilton Heights, and Washington Heights neighborhoods. She is only one of two women to hold the seat, and we are delighted to have her give us a few remarks. Senator? Thank you. You know, I got so caught up in the uh, pinning, you know, all the names. We've got some great supporters out here. So I'm going to first give it up for the supporters who came out today. They called out all those names. Good afternoon, Helen Fold College of Nursing. Uh, take a deep breath and soak it all in. The graduates before us today will forever be known as those who came of age as nurses in the midst of a pandemic. 
that is a special distraction that carries special responsibility. My thanks to Dr. Joyce Griffin Sobel, the college president. Let's cheer her for ex her extraordinary leadership. <laughs> to the college board of trustees and financial donors that keep the doors open, let's cheer them for their unselfish acts of care and kindness. And again, to the family and friends of the graduates, let's cheer them. The college faculty and staff, let's cheer them because they could be anywhere else in the world. But they're here with us in Harlem. And to the college alumni, thank you for taking your degree and your skills and your hearts and making a difference in the world. Thank you. You know, as a black woman, a daughter of a home care worker who later became a nurse and then arriving here today as a New York State Senator, that nurse never got to see her daughter become a senator. But as I was sitting here thinking, her spirit is so with me right now. She would be so proud to know that I'm speaking before you here today. And it just tells me that if you follow your dreams, stick to what you believe in, and remain passionate about what you do, you can achieve anything. So I congratulate all of you today, graduates of this great school. Now, I was supposed to be here for Black History Month, and I was up in Albany with the budget and couldn't make it. So. I'm going to do a little bit of that right here. Please forgive me. The year was 1945, and for some it feels like yesterday and others ancient times. But we're blessed to always have a start date, and in some cases, an end date, too. This college is an historic institution on so many fronts. Nursing education, first to, to aid LPNs into diploma registered nurses, first hospital-based school to offer the associate's degree. More importantly, Fuld made all of its history right here in Harlem and in buildings that African Americans providing the keys from North General to Bethel Gospel Assembly Church. As a black woman, I'm proud of the legacy of this college and its partners. Your rankings in 2016 ranked first in the United States among 821 community colleges. Yeah. In 2017, ranked first best community and career colleges by salary potential. In 2018, ranked first in these are the small colleges with the highest earning graduates by state. Yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> and in 2022, ranked in my pride, knowing that all of this was done in Harlem and others historically left unrecognized or just forgotten. Now my staff, uh, William Allen is here today. Just stand up, William, let them say hello to you. He's also a district leader in the community, but you know, he came up with the term Harlem Hidden Figures. Yeah. This college is one of Harlem and New York State's best kept secrets, but like the movie Hidden Figures, the secret is now out like a bestseller. <laughs> and if, if black women and other struggling people can make it, we all can make it. You deserve our praise, you deserve our support. And please let me, without citation here today, a few literary licenses just to illustrate a key point on the significance of this college and its location in Harlem. The history of black nurses in America has been marked by a fight for access to education, to job opportunities, and most fundamentally to freedom. Even when lacking formal education, early African American nurses played a vital role as healers in their communities. Joyce E. Wilson, 
1935 to 2021. Many of you may not have even heard of Joyce Wilson, but she's very significant today to me. She was Harlem born and raised on West 140th Street. She enjoyed an extensive nursing career. Her most famous patient was Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King at Harlem Hospital in September 1958 after he was stabbed. As reported in the New York Times, King, then just 29 years old, was approached by an unseemingly assuming woman who was stylishly, stylishly dressed in a suit, jewelry, and cat's eye glasses. <laughs> Are you Martin Luther King, the woman asked. Yes, King replied, not looking up from where he was signing a copy of Stride Towards Freedom, the Montgomery story. A second later, Isola Ware Curry plunged a seven-inch ivory-handled steel letter opener into King's chest. Nurse Wilson's time with Dr. King, and I'm going to read from her, her obituary because this also says, uh, and this is her obituary, Joyce Wilson, and most people didn't know this until she passed away, but her most famous patient was the late Dr. Martin Luther King, who she cared for after he was stabbed by a deranged woman in Bloomstein's department store in Harlem. She resonated the values of compassion and dedicated and dedication, I'm sorry, throughout her nursing career. And those words were so striking to me, the compassion, that part. The compassion is not something that you're taught here or anywhere. It's the compassion that you have inside of you that's gonna make the difference in what you've learned. And it's your dedication. That's also something that you couldn't be taught here, that you are gonna take with you, that's gonna make the difference. I have a few other women that I wanted to note, but I'm gonna skip past them. Uh, I'm not gonna give the whole history, William, thank you. <laughs> so the work of our nurses has made monumental progress in how they are recognized. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted areas that continually emphasize ongoing disparities. The optics, of our COVID-19 vaccine by showcasing black nurses choosing to take the vaccine will undoubtedly be critical in calming fears and increase a message of confidence in research, role vaccination, and ultimately saving lives. The work continues to not just provide care at the bedside, but also leadership in research and continuity in education. The role of nurses is tied to continuing to be present for patients who may experience marginalization, but find comfort in your presence and your words. Our graduates, may you join the ranks of the nurses before you as you embark on your journey and career in this profession. I salute you for following your dreams. As a woman, your senator, as a member of the Senate Health Committee, I'm going to make sure that your history is deeply woven in American and global history. The historians might not remember me, but I'm sure gonna fight for you to be remembered. I didn't wanna talk policy today, but I am gonna say in my five months in the Senate, I have fought for you. In the budget, we created a nurse student loan repayment program. It's called Nurses Across New York, and we will expand it each and every year. We provided health care and home care bonuses for, for health care workers, and we enacted fair pay for home care finally. In addition, thank you. Yeah, give it up, home care. In addition, I co-sponsor and speak up every day about the New York Health Act, which will put patients over profit. I'm also co-sponsoring the following bills, uh, S4885, which prohibits mandatory overtime for nurses. Yes, come on. S8175, that just prohibits mandatory 
but it's still available, but we want to make sure that our nurses are well cared for and our patients are well cared for. S8175, which enacts the Recruit Power, Support, Pay, Educate, Connect, and Train Nurses Act. And S8348, which relates to universal newborn nurse home visiting services, requires health insurance coverage for universal newborn nurse home visiting services. Why? Come on, that's important. So why do I raise the examples? Why am I talking about that here? Because the work doesn't just, it doesn't end with you just becoming nurses. We can only achieve a just and equitable society filled with just and equitable outcomes for our people if we are in the fight together. To the class of 2022, the dedicated heroes who have already made it through this pandemic, which exposed each and every fault line of inequality and widened and deepened them, you have a special responsibility. I beseech you to find a way to not only care for each patient individually, but to help our communities heal as ambassadors and as advocates. As you go out into the world, I see nurses often in Albany. They're not there to care for the sick, but they're there to instruct us and inform us on what's needed for you to care better for the sick. Keep with that fight. Make sure that there's equality on every level in your care, in your compensation, in health care around you. Speak it into our communities. We know that these disparities existed long before the pandemic, and we have to end it. And I look to you to help us end it. For you, as you do your work and carry out your daily activities, and also to instruct us, let us know what we're supposed to be doing to make it better for you and for our communities. Make sure that it's not only about care, but it's about change and action throughout your career. And I promise you, not only fulfillment, but a better world will come of it, thanks to you. We appreciate Senator Clear's remarks, and we depend on her to fix Albany. <laughs> so, all nurses, Please stand. We are now going to recite the Nightingale Pledge, which has been modified 20 or 30 million times since she wrote it. Um, but so this is the latest version. I sol solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to live my life with integrity and to practice my profession faithfully. With dedication will I endeavor to uphold the ethical, scientific, and legal ethical, scientific, and legal standards of my profession, of my profession. And, devote and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. Welcome to the profession. So we're almost done, have patience. So now we're going to give some awards. The first award is the President's Award. And this is an award that I give to a student who has represented extraordinary achievement, persistence, dedication to the profession, and who represents the nurse mission of service 
by contributions to the college. And this year, it's going to Rosalia Brown Stamp. <laughs> She's going to make me cry. <laughs> Deep breaths, Rosalie. Deep breaths. going to let her sit down and rest up here for a few minutes. How fabulous is this? God, I love graduation. It makes all the annoying emails that you've sent me almost worth it. <laughs> I'm now going to introduce our fabulous provost, Dr. Sandy Carollo, who will now present the rest of the awards. Okay, our first award is for academic excellence, which is the highest academic average. For our AAS program, that's Natalie Plains. And for our GBS, it's Kamari Martin. academic honors, we have Shanir Dyke for AAS. And for our GBS, Maria Vikanovic. Next, we have Clinical Excellence, which is presented to students who have been recommended by faculty for outstanding clinical work. For AAS, it's Deepa Bergman. Thank <laughs> you. 
And for GBS, it's Samantha Imhoff. Okay, next we have clinical honors, and for AAS, it's Curtis Altar. Okay, and for GBS, it's Bianca Monsion. Okay, next we have the Marguerite Haggerty Memorial Award, and this is given to a graduating AAS student for excellence in medical surgical nursing, Dorothy Williams. Next is the Carol A. Thompson Memorial Award. This is given to a graduating student from the AAS program in recognition of perseverance in pursuing a nursing career. Angelica Soto. While we're waiting, uh, we have a, a new award this year, and it's the Provost Faculty Award. This is given to a faculty member for exceptional service. And the awardee is Dr. Ramkumari Balaram. Angelica is back in the house. Let's say it again. Okay, this is for the Carol A. Thompson Memorial Award. 
for a graduating student from the AAS program in recognition of perseverance in nursing or in pursuing a nursing career. Angelica Soto. So we would like to recognize our BSN students who were inducted into the Sigma Theta Tau Honor Society. Um, if you would please stand at your seats and be recognized. Rosie Acevedo. <laughs> Samantha Filosa. <laughs> Teja Jabawin. <laughs> Ju Julia J. Jackson. <laughs> Sylvia Lopez Clark. <laughs> Kamari Martin. Naisha Obermuller. Sunny Shurak. Kenya Thigpen. And Maria Vikanovic. It's definitely an honor. Thank you. Be seated. So President Griffin Sobel, honored guests, as provost, I have the privilege to present to you the candidates for graduation, May 13, 2022. Each of you has completed the requirements for graduation for the Associate of Applied Sciences degree or Bachelor of Science degree. I will turn it over to our president. Would the graduates please stand? Okay, listen to me now, because this is what the whole your whole education is about, <laughs> this sentence. Having fulfilled all requirements for a GBS or an AAS degree in nursing, I hereby confer the GBS and AAS degree on each of you. You may turn your tassels to the left. Okay. Please be seated. Well, we've had a spectacular ceremony, and you may celebrate today, but starting tomorrow, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Families, do not let them sleep in, stay out late partying. They can't do anything other than study or you are going to be paying their bills for the rest of your natural life. <laughs> we want them to pass their exam. They have had the preparation. We trust that you will study and let us know when you pass. And we cannot express our congratulations to you more sincerely. We are all so happy for you. And I can only say personally, that I hope you have a career as fun, usually, as I have had over the last 47 years. Go forth and care for people. <laughs> so, thank you. So the stage party is gonna leave first, and then uh, the ushers will have you leave. Uh,